superpowers. Yeah! And then everybody got superpowers. Where's everyone going? To fight crime. Okay. Now everyone... Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2023 DC sequel Shazam! Fury of the Gods. The film is directed by David S. Sandberg and it stars Zachary Levi, Asher Angel, Jack Dylan Grazer, Adam Brode, uh, Grace, Caroline Curry, Lucy Liu and Helen Mirren. Now this is the direct sequel to Shazam! that came out two or three years ago. Um, now... This time round, it focuses on, obviously, Shazam, um, Billy Batson and his uh, orphan friends who are all living together. They've all now got their superpowers that we saw at the end of the first film. Um, because of their maturity, um, they're not particularly well-loved or liked within the city because they keep kind of messing up. They've got good intentions. They're not really working together as a team. Some of them are trying to outdo each other. Uh, there's no real leadership, so on and so forth. And then we get some um, old gods, if you like, uh, played by Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu, who kind of come back um, and start causing havoc for Shazam and the rest of his team. And they, they need to start working together Um to find a way to defeat them. Right, what are my thoughts on Shazam, Fury of the Gods? Well, this, you could argue, is potentially the sequel that nobody really asked for. Now, as much as I really did enjoy Shazam, the first one, it was one of those films that the trailer really was excellent, you know what I mean? It looked funny and what have you, and then when you kind of went to watch the full film, um it kind of wasn't as good as the trailer made it out to be, if you like. But it was a particularly... It was really quite entertaining, the first Shazam. Um, and I've always liked Zachary Levi. I loved him in Chuck. Um, I really enjoyed that TV show. I think he's got a lot of charisma and personality, Zachary Levi. And I do think he's a good choice to play Shazam. You know, the child in a superhero's body sort of thing. And I think aspects of it do really, really work. I think... The thing with this sequel is, almost, it's it's a little bit meh, in a sense of it's, don't get me wrong, it, it, it's entertaining. There are moments in it that will make you smile, even moments in it will probably make you laugh. It's heartwarming at times, you know, uh, the effects I think are of, of a very good standard uh, for all like the flying and the superhero abilities and there's like a number of like creatures that are brought on. Um, to earth like dragons and cyclopses and a whole array of of, of mythical be beasts and creatures that are unleashed upon the world and they all look pretty good actually they're very very creative for the most part i think very much like the first one the film kind of lacks any real tangible credible force i don't I didn't necessarily buy Lucy Liu or Helen Mirren, really, as these kind of gods. Um, they just... I just didn't buy them as a legitimate threat sort of thing. Um, and it kind of resulted in the film being a little bit by the numbers and generic to me. And it didn't necessarily feel like a strong progression from the first film um it didn't feel like it, by the end of watching this film it didn't feel like it had massively moved on from the first film and in actual fact it felt like it was retreading previous dc films and i can't really say more than that without giving spoilers away but you know you get you get a, you do get a cameo um in this film from a well-known dc character um, and all that kind of stuff but I don't know, I don't necessarily buy Shazam and his team as like a credible superhero force, you know what I mean? It, it just feels like they're children playing like superheroes. And we got that in the first film. Um, and I don't necessarily feel like um, the characters have evolved really at all in this film. I mean, they do try tame attempts that, you know, Billy Batson now has is aging out of his care providers if you like 
Um, I, whereas in the first film, it was it focused on his, you know, his mother and things like that. It, it just didn't feel like there was much or any need for these characters to be the children in this. There didn't seem to be any real interesting stories to give them when they were children. Uh, they try to give um, Freddy's character a bit of a love interest here that, for me, fell a bit flat. Um, and the other characters were g not really given anything interesting to do. So it's almost like they've got too many characters here to know what to do with, where the only real interesting character, certainly for me, is the Shazam character. I'm not really interested in the others. Um, so I, th I do think the film lacked a legitimate threat. Um, and I do think, you know, it, it lacked some real oomph, this film. It was a little bit too lighthearted at times. Um, and I just think they should really have upped the ante. You know, kind of force the character to grow up a little bit. Um, and what they try and do here is a little bit tame and a little bit, a little bit too lighthearted. And I think it focused a little bit too much on trying to be funny and comedic rather than, you know, being a fun and entertaining like superhero film. And it, it probably sounds like I'm being overly critical here, but uh, to be honest, it, it's a perfectly watchable and satisfy. And I was totally satisfied in many ways watching this. I just don't think it's evolved at all from the first film. And I think that's being reflected right now in its box office because it's almost like people are like, mm, I'm not sure we really wanted a second Shazam. Not unless you were going to really integrate this character fully into the DC. And again... I do think a lot of people are a bit feeling like they're in limbo with DC right now. You know, with James Gunn taking over, what is happening with DC right now? Who, which characters are they progressing with, James Gunn? Which, you know, there's lots of talk about Zack Snyder continuing his DC universe on Netflix. And DC fans, and I would count myself as one of them, were a bit like, what is happening with our favourite characters? Because why should I get invested in Shazam if there's never going to be any more progression for this character, as there's likely not to be for Black Adam and others, and certainly no Henry Cavill and stuff like that. It kind of feels like they're rebooting it when they might not necessarily need to reboot it, and we just don't know where we are with it. So, don't get me wrong, perfectly entertaining film. Um, most people that go to watch this, you know, I want to just watch a light-hearted, fun superhero film. For the most part, you are going to get that. But for those of you wanting, like, it was massive fans of the first one, and you're wanting, like, some real evolution of the characters and, you know, some real up-the-ante sort of thing, you're probably going to be a little bit disappointed with it. Um, I was a tinge disappointed with it, but I definitely came out of the cinema, you know, reasonably satisfied too. So I think the DC Universe right now... Um, and I never really like saying that sort of thing. DC Universe, the DC EU, whatever way they call it. I think, like I say, it is struggling a little bit. It is a little bit in limbo. There, there's a lack of direction. Um, and I think that is kind of coming through. I think they're almost like, well, we've got Shazam. It's in the bag. Let's release it. Um, and the response they're getting from audience goers is like, well, we're not really that interested because we don't know what we're doing with this DC uh, franchise right now. So anyway... 7 out of 10 from me. It's certainly worth checking out if you enjoyed the first one. It's not a bad film at all. It's just not exactly the most satisfying you will ever thing you will ever watch. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the review. I'll be back with more reviews and content on the channel very, very soon.